So I went and saw Solo last night, and it's kind of boring. Uh, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I've brought it up many times on the podcast. Rogue One is probably my favorite Star Wars movie. So I think that you should know that before I share my opinion about this one. Generally, my biggest focus with a movie is on its story. That's the part I find the most engaging, the part I enjoy the most. You know, I can appreciate the cinematography, I can appreciate the effects, the music, all this different stuff. But I don't really care. Uh, if the story is engaging, then I am going to love the movie. That's pretty much how it comes down to it. It can look bad, but have a great story. I'm going to like it. But with saying all of that, this movie looked really bad. The beginning... I couldn't see what was going on. I couldn't really tell what was happening. I honestly almost got up and went and asked if their projector was out of focus. Um, it took a while for it to finally, once once he got out of the war, things got a little bit better. But that first, whatever it was, 20 minutes looked terrible. One of the things that I have been talking about and that I've been a little frustrated with the idea of Solo before I saw it or anything like that was I didn't know why they called it Solo. I mean, I get that it's about Han Solo, but why would you reveal that? To me, the the interesting part of the story would be to try to tell his origin story without people knowing whose story it is until the end. The people who are more invested into Star Wars are going to know really early on what the story is and what's going on, and they're going to enjoy that because then they get to feel smart. They get to feel like, oh, wow, this, all this time, all this effort I've put into this series, these movies, these books, all this different stuff is actually paying off. The people who don't see it, who don't recognize it right away, who get to the end and gets revealed to them, they're going to be blown away because who doesn't love a good plot twist? Who doesn't love a good reveal? So with all the build up to this movie, I just kept asking why... Why are they telling you this is a Han Solo movie? This doesn't seem to make sense. It doesn't seem like the best way to go about this. And people would say that it, you couldn't really just name it anonymous, a Star Wars story or outlaw, like I titled this video, uh, because nobody's going to see it. And while I understand that, while I agree, I don't know if that's quite true. Because people are definitely going to see a Star Wars movie. You could not have any promotional stuff. You could not have any ads, any news about it, nothing going out. Just say, oh, here it is. Similar to what they did with Cloverfield Paradox, but on a different level. Just tell people it's out. The day it comes out, people are going to see it. And then if you are able to make a good movie with a good twist of, oh, no, this was a Han Solo movie that you didn't expect people are going to talk about it and they're going to talk about how much they appreciate it and they're going to share what they liked about it. Where right now people are just kind of talking about Solo as, eh, it's fine, it's boring, but you know, it's whatever, it's Disney Star Wars movie, like you kind of get what you expect. And now when I watched the movie, I started to notice some things that seemed like maybe my original idea was the original vision not not because of me not because of anything i've thought or said not not at all in that way but it, it, there seemed like there was things that were pointing to they were going to keep the han solo part more of a secret than they did there's there's three things that really stood out to me about that one was the millennium falcon's name when donald glover says oh the millennium falcon he's off screen he doesn't say that so that could easily have been uh dubbed over and then the next scene, Han Solo walks into the cockpit and he's telling Donald Glover like, oh, wow, this is. And then he gives the model number of the ship. Why would you say the Millennium Falcon and then have Han Solo give the model number next? Like it, it doesn't it's kind of redundant. I mean, it's pointing out, oh, yeah, he knows his ships. But uh, to me, it felt like they didn't intend to say the Millennium Falcon. He was going to say, oh, wow, this this is this type of ship. You know, interesting. And then you have the alter, alterations to the ship. The nose looked different. And I think that was to try to hide. 
that it was actually a Millennium Falcon. Otherwise, why would you really do that? I know there's this theory about in A New Hope, they talk about escape pods just being launched, but I don't, that doesn't really line up. Uh, it, I mean, you can, I don't know, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fit well for me to, to go through that much just for that one line, but I guess maybe this whole movie is doing that, so who's to say? And then when Chewbacca and Han Solo split up in the mines, and he's like, here, take this, go rescue your people, and then they meet back up later, I don't, I think that may have been when he was supposed to meet Chewbacca. I think that was where they were going to have it happen originally. And now, none of this stuff is like hard evidence. This is just my speculation and what stood out to me. But I, I just think that with some small tweaks and hiding the fact that this is Han Solo, you don't have to use his name. You don't have to say, oh, you don't have a people, so you're Solo. That, like, that was super dumb. Um, I think you could you could make a really cool movie even with the structure that they use. Some of the smaller things that I think you could change to make this story work in the way that I'm talking about is if you take out the majority of the references that are spoken. So anytime they say something that is in reference to Han Solo's character in the later movies, you could take that out because most of the time they felt forced and un- kind of unnecessary. They seem to slow things down and it's just you don't really need it. You could you could talk about going to Kessel and getting the stuff there, but you don't have to keep hitting home about oh how many parsecs and all that type of stuff like that. Just let people appreciate it. You don't everyone everyone doesn't have to get it. It's okay for people to miss references. That's why people appreciate them is when they're special. Uh, cut out the, the beginning completely. You don't need to establish uh, Amelia Clark and uh, Han Solo's backstory. They're, they're, none of that felt, that all felt like reshoots because her being, them growing up together, them trying to escape together, and then her being this uh, general or lieutenant or whatever she was later, didn't, it was way too convenient for the story and seems like you just cut that out completely, let him you know, maybe talk about her or not even bring her up until they meet and then be like, hey, we grew up together. You're good. You don't need all that extra stuff. No, you lose that that speeder chase, but that, it, one, it looked awful. It was all in shadows. You couldn't really see what was going on. And two, it, it really wasn't that exciting. What I would have done or what I think they should have done is have more of the war scene. Extend that. Take all that time that you used of them on their slum planet. I don't remember the name of it. Take all that time out and expand him being in the war, him being in the military. They they have this short scene of him fighting a war. You never see an enemy. You never see them doing any destruction. They talk about how they're kind of, or he, how he thinks they're kind of villainous, but that's it. You don't see, you don't see his progression, progression throughout it. You don't see the the trauma he's taking, the toll it's having on his, you know, his spirit, on his soul about how, well, they say I'm a good guy, but I really feel like I'm being a bad guy here. They don't explore any of that. And I feel like there's a ton that you could do that would be really interesting. And they, they just didn't. And earlier I had, I had mentioned that I thought Chewbacca and Han met in the mine. I think that would have been better. I think had they met had Han Solo saved Chewbacca from the mine, one, it would have been harder to recognize that that's Chewbacca or the Chewbacca that we know because he would have been with other Wookiees. So he would have blended in a little bit more. Then he would have saved them and they would have gotten together. So he would have kept the secret going a little bit more. And two, it it feels a lot more natural for them to kind of stick together. Or because I... I could be wrong about this, sorry if I am, but I believe Chewbacca feels indebted to Han. That Han saved him, so now he needs to be with him and, you know, kind of be alongside with him throughout his journeys to help protect him and keep him safe. That doesn't feel earned 
with them escaping prison because Chewbacca did all the work. But if it's the mine scene, then that adds up a little bit more. I would have liked for there not to be two card games. I think uh, having two card games was a little bit much between Han and Lando. Or, you know, Han should have really called him out on the cheating or something along those lines. But I wouldn't have finished the card game at the end. Like, just let it fade to black before you show anything. And that's a small, dumb little thing. But the... I don't know, the way that ended was like overly goofy. The dumbest point of reference to the rest of the series was when Darth Maul lit his lightsaber. I for as much as I've thought about it and you know trying to figure out why he did that, I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. He's on a projection and he stands up and lights his lightsabers to look imposing to her as a projection. I mean, the whole point was, oh, if you didn't understand the horns on his head and the, you know, robot legs here, this is Darth Maul. And then he turns on the lightsaber. Again, it's too far. You, you were fine with everything up until that point i you know i felt like it was a solid you know like an easter egg or a reference or whatever like it wasn't really hidden but it was it was okay until that point for me and it just felt like why are you doing this like how how dumb do you expect everyone to be who's watching your movie i i, I enjoyed him showing up because it's kind of establishing what i think is going to be the obi-wan movie that Obi-Wan is going to get revenge for Qui-Gon Jinn. They're going to, you know, go at it again. And I, that that might be interesting. That, that kind of got me excited for the Obi-Wan movie, even though I don't think it's actually announced or anything like that. But it that's definitely what they're doing. Like, I don't know if you've seen the What If Star Wars Episode One Was Good by Belated Media. It's It's great. He tells this amazing story that's, covers all three movies about what he wished they would have done with the first three star wars definitely check that out if you haven't seen it but i i believe they're establishing a way to tell that story in the movie which would be pretty cool i mean you have to obviously you cut out anakin and all that type of stuff it's just darth maul and uh obi-wan but the the conflict is still there what makes it important is still there I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just I had my own idea and I'm like, you know, really looking with a magnifying glass to try to find things to point out, oh, this this is what they were doing, but it just makes a lot more sense to me. Uh let me know what you think. Uh if you agree, you think I'm dumb, whatever. Let me know uh if you noticed that stuff that I was talking about and what you think of the movie overall. I uh I think it's kind of boring, but you know, that who cares what I think? 